up guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Irini Jacobs if you don't know that. Before we start this video, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up, share it with your friends and also subscribe to the channel for more amazing content like that. In January 2001, in a lab in Europe, Jack Pankson, neuroscientists and psychologists who wrote the book The Effective Neuroscience with his friend Jeffrey Bergdorf. These two were doing a very important experiment. So they went to the lab, prepared it and prepared their lab rats. And they decided that instead of doing any sort of painful experiment on these rats, they would give them a massage and tickle them to see how they would react. And the results were surprising. The rats were in extreme relaxation. And when they were tickled, they were making sounds that the human ears can't pick up. Very, very low sounds, about 50 kilohertz. The result is not strange at all, my dear viewer, because despite the simplicity of an action like massaging or tickling or rubbing, however, this is a very important behavior in the animal kingdom. Even an action like grooming. We literally have animals that specialize in grooming, like the baboon, who spends 17% of the time grooming and cleaning itself from any bugs. Now some of you are gonna think, wow, very clean creatures and thus humans with all this intelligence around us were even too busy to go take a shower every day wait my dear viewer I will tell you that what the baboon does is not just to be clean but for other reasons like mating opportunities or high quality food some baboons even use it as a stress relief do you know my dear viewer that just 1% of the time is enough for grooming but no baboons use 17% of the time even female baboons when males come back from a fight or something she sits down to groom him how romantic no that that's that's not romantic that's just ew so she basically grooms him to relieve him from stress ah i wish the human wife learns from the wife of the baboon that was a joke animals like gorillas shares their food with whom was grooming them the gorilla would be like oh i remember you you were just grooming me. Hey, d don't forget to wash your hands with soap because I'm a germaphobe gorilla and I like my food to be clean. If you have a dog or a cat, you'll notice how much they love it when you rub their head. And you'll notice how relaxed they are. We can't deny the effect of this contact and its ability to communicate and to show love and affection. A study in the University of Liverpool in 2014 said that the skin, especially hairy skin areas, contain sensory neurons called C-tactile that respond Respond for gentle stroking, provoking feelings of love and affection. These nerves are in humans and mammals. Contact with these nerves activates places in the brain that are responsible for self-awareness of your body. This awareness is in humans and animals. But to be clear, a human's self-awareness goes beyond just nerves. It's more complicated than that. Like having mental feelings and anxiety, fear of commitment, very complicated feelings. And that makes us question, do animals have have feelings like us? Do animals really feel pleasure towards food, sexual contact, and mental happiness like pride or friendship or love? Is the animal kingdom really happy? Or does it look like it's happy, but it's actually not happy and we just call it happy, but it's never been happy? You don't know how long that phrase took me. Although feelings are a psychological phenomenon, but we can't deny its effect on the behaviors of animals and humans. So if we really want to understand the behaviors of animals, we need to know if these animals have problems or not. But how do we know that? Hard science like chemistry, physics, and anatomy can't 100% tell us if animals feel happiness or not. But at least the animal's brain anatomy tells us that the brain of animals don't mind feeling happy. With that brain, yes, they can feel happy as far as we understand. Even if some animals have smaller brains than the humans in comparison to the body, of course. For example, a cat's brain represents only 1% of its body, while a human's brain represents 2% of the body. But a cat's brain looks so much like a human's brain. And that's more important than the size itself. We actually almost share the same limbic system structure that's responsible for memory and emotions with a lot of animals. Behaviorists were looking at the behaviors of animals as if it's a reaction, a reflex. And they see that the thing that we call the stimulus respond model explains all the behaviors of animals, no matter the complexity or how dramatic the reaction could be. Because at the end, my dear viewer, it 
it's nothing other than a response to an external or an internal effect. And obviously you didn't understand a word of what I just said. Okay, I'll try to make it more simple. Animals get exposed to an effect, an action from an internal or an external source. And the result in that is a reaction. That's it, it's that simple. Something happens, they react. You still don't understand, I'll give you a real example. Like when your doorbell rings, you know that the food has arrived. So when the doorbell rings, you will start drooling. It's that simple. Do you understand or not? Do you understand or not? Am I talking to myself? Am I am I talking to myself? Some behaviorists like uh, Rene Descartes and the most popular B.F. Skinner, of course, believed that animals are more like robots. They automatically respond to the stimulus they are exposed to. No complications. You do this, I do that. And if you think about it, this point of view of the behaviorists make it easy on scientists to study animals. And for that, a lot of scientists like this point of view and they ignore if animals have an emotional side or not. And they see it as a Pythagorean idea, a romantic idea to make cartoons about. But they see it as it's not actual science. Scientists that don't believe that animals have emotions call out scientists that believe that animals have emotions for being so soft, too anecdotal, misleading, or sloppy. They're like, what the heck people, we're scientists. We want hardcore science. We're not George Orwell to make Animal Farm and say that animals have feelings and they feel and emotions and stuff like that. We are science. We're scientists. Ethology science, which studies the behaviors of animals, until recently was based on the belief that animals were only motivated by their instincts. We're talking about an instinct. We're not talking about a complex being. We are talking about an instinct, especially the survival instinct. So the book when Elif Fence Weep came out. In this book, the author explains the behaviors of a lot of animals and what they do towards their family. And it was based on evidence that you can't ignore as proof that animals experience a lot of different emotions like happiness, empathy, mercy, sadness, and even embarrassment. And those behaviors are not just based on instincts. Action and the reaction immediately know. Animals are not like robots programmed in a certain way like they said. The emotions that animals have helped in a way or another in its survival. Like when elephants celebrate a newborn elephant. Or them trying to protect everyone in their group. Or their empathy towards an injured or a sick elephant. <laughs> Excuse me, love. If we're talking about an instinct, then why don't they run away with their genetics and start the progress of reproduction somewhere safe where no one is injured? You can't possibly ignore all these behaviors. Like the behaviors of a funeral that's popular among animals like elephants, gorillas, and birds like magpie. When someone of their family dies, their emotional distress is obvious. Can you imagine a funeral? A being that's already dead. Why are the other animals sad about it? Why don't they just focus on life and focus on instincts instead? Or another behavior when you see a dolphin trying to save another animal from drowning and dragging him to land. Or when female sea lions cry out loud when their baby dies. I am not even joking, you can hear her wailing. Again, if she's living by instinct, then why is she crying instead of making a new baby? But emotions exist and they can make animals invest certain energy on useless things like crying. Donna Fernandez, zoo administrator, said that she saw one of the zoo gorillas called Babis die from cancer and that made the other gorillas very distressed, crying and just beating themselves. They took the food that Babis used to like and put it in her hand. Even birds, Alexander Scotch in his book, The Mind of Birds, said that when birds fly and dip themselves in water, it's not just because they want to wash their bodies, but it's also for something that may surprise you. The birds are just having fun. They're doing something with no reason just because they want to have fun. <laughs> so excuse me again, love, but all these behaviors don't seem programmed. But it seems more like the animal is realizing the situation and rating it. And they feel complex emotion towards it and they act based on that. Although scientists can expect the behaviors of animals almost every time, however, the animal kingdom is full of drama and they 
always surprise us. The emotions of lots of animals can be seen through their eyes, their reactions, the movement of their muscles, the way they walk, the way they sit, the way they smell, the way they sound. Even a behavior like sex that was thought that the only reason behind it is reproduction. Until Jonathan Belcom wrote a book called The Pleasurable Kingdom, Animals and the Nature of Feeling Good. He said that mating or sex between animals is something animals do for their own pleasure. Animals sometimes have non-reproductive, non-conceptive sex. Mating that's only for pleasure, not reproduction. Like mating in seasons other than mating seasons. <laughs> Excuse me, love, that is non-reproductive. Or mating with a pregnant female. <laughs> Excuse me again, love, she's already pregnant, that's non-reproductive. Or mating with a female who hasn't yet reached puberty. Or homosexuality, males with males, females with females. That's all non-reproductive. Sometimes animals do that to make uh, friendships or create certain alliances. For an example, in some birds, if a female bird has babies, met another female bird that doesn't have babies, these two female birds mate to share the nest and look after the babies. This is very strange because we are not used to seeing it. And it was very weird for scientists. Even actions like masturbation and necrophilia or mating to decrease stress, like mating after fights, even if they're from the same gender, or mating to make an alliance and resolve a conflict. So long story short, sex is part of the daily routine of animals. Some female animals mate with male animals so that they can have food. This is prostitution! Bonobo started prostitution before it was called. Female bonobos gather to make alliances. They have feminism! Bonobo started feminism before it was called part two. These alliances include mating between females. They decided to cancel and to break up with males. They're like, let's go girls, we'll make our own society. Strong, independent bonobo. The prize that the animals gain from these actions, as far as we understand, is their own happiness. They are happy doing these things. Scientists now understand that animals realize happiness through actions like eating, playing, mating, relaxing, touching, and even watching a beautiful view. And that makes us reconsider our explanations for these actions and reevaluate how we treat them. Apparently, these creatures feel everything. So we need to treat them with kindness and mercy. And this, my dear viewer, is the most important part of the video. And I also wanted to tell you that you are not alone. A lot of animals share most of your feelings and emotions. Humans are not the only kind that can live a happy or a miserable life. Happiness was and still a very important element in the existence of different kinds of creatures. And to be truly happy, my dear viewer, you should go watch my previous videos, wait for my next video, and also subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to share it with your friends because it's easy and it's a useful video, so share it. Strong, independent bonobos.